Vancouver Public Schools hosts visitors from around the state and country. Why they're looking to Vancouver to lead the way. Plus, it was the play of the year. I mean, I'll remember that for the rest of our lives. I'm sure everybody will. The dramatic football finish that found its way to ESPN. And imagine trying to do schoolwork when your stomach won't stop growling. How a partnership is keeping kids full and ready to learn. Hello and welcome to In the Know, I'm Colleen Jamison. Vancouver Public Schools draw officials from the state and national levels. First, state lawmakers take a tour to see how students in our district are finding success. Several members of the House Education Committee spent a couple of days in Vancouver. They visited iTech Preparatory and saw firsthand how students are learning science, technology, engineering, and math. They also saw how the district's Family Community Resource Centers are giving students in poverty a leg up. FCRCs work with community partners to provide resources to children and families. At least seven lawmakers attend the tour along with their staffs. The other recent visit came to Sacagawea Elementary School. Officials from the U.S. Department of Education and the State Superintendent's Office swung by to witness the school's green team in action. Nice to meet you, Andrea. Officials from the U.S. Department of Education are traveling the country. We've been to Alabama, Wisconsin, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Vancouver's Sacagawea Elementary is today's stop. These government officials are only looking at the nation's most environmentally active schools, and Sacagawea is certainly up there, earning a designation as a federal green ribbon school. Um, since the award last uh, spring, uh, the green team has almost doubled and that includes parents and students and uh, community partners as well. So it's been a wonderful opportunity and we're very grateful. Students on the school's green team show these visitors, which also include members of the state superintendent's office, how they're reducing waste and improving water quality at school. They're reducing their environmental impact and cost, so that's everything waste, water, alternative transportation and energy use. They're improving health, so they're doing great things in the areas of nutrition and fitness and as well as environmental health. And then they're teaching environmental education and we really want to get the word out about what they're doing so that all schools can be doing it. Congratulations! Visitors also saw how teachers are connecting environmental efforts to class subjects like science. You guys, what I is this? That's a stone fly. And how do you know? Because it, um, it has stone. It looks like there's stone. That's right. And what these guests took away is that it doesn't require a major financial investment to implement change. They're not innately rich. They're just resourceful and they have tremendous leadership. <laughs> Hauk Elementary has its own green team and it's having a big impact on the school. About 100 volunteers turned out to build an outdoor classroom. The classroom sits near the playground and includes a stage seating for more than 30 people, student-made tiles, and more. The space can be used by teachers to get their kids outside during the school day to present lessons related to nature or just get students some fresh air. Some of the kids have never seen a strawberry grow, so they come out at recess, it's right outside the recess doors, so when they see them turn red and it's magical and they all want a strawberry, um, they've never seen it actually grow. They, you know, Where do you get a strawberry from? Well, from this grocery store, right? Well, this is how it actually grows. So it's just another opportunity for them to see um, how things really work in the real world. It's, it's fun. More than 120 students have participated in the Green Team so far, coming to the library during recess. This is just phase one of the Green Team's project. It plans to build more garden space, a tree house, and more. The project is dependent on community partners. To donate or get involved, contact the Hauk Foundation, which is located at the school and at www.haukfoundation.org.
It was a place so spectacular, so unlikely that it made international news. And to make it even juicier, it happened in a game between bitter rivals right here in Vancouver. Nick Vole has the blocked kick and what came after that had football fans around the country talking. It takes just eight minutes to drive from Skyview High School to Columbia River High School. And if familiarity breeds contempt, there's plenty to go around between these two schools, especially in sports. As like a student body, we just do not like each other, just school to school. For the past eight years, Skyview has defeated Columbia River in football, sometimes by a big margin. Reese Keller and the rest of the Chieftains vowed that this year would be different. We wanted to make sure that we won this game so that we could just end all like the humi humiliation we've had over the past eight years. It didn't seem like that was going to happen after a storm touchdown gave them the lead with less than a minute to go. But River kept playing. With 39 seconds left, we took the ball and got it into field goal range. The kicker lined it up. Going up, I mean, I had no doubts that we were going to make it. But the Skyview defense held tough. And then once he blocked it, I was like, ah, oh, thought with everybody else, thought, you know, game's over. I turned around, put my head down. The Chieftain sulked. The storm celebrated, and it took a moment for anyone to notice. The refs hadn't blown their whistles yet. The game was not over. I turn around, and I'm just going to pick up the ball to like return to the sideline because I thought the play was over. But then I hear my coach yell, pick up the ball, it's live. And because the blocked kick hadn't crossed the line of scrimmage, it was still in play. And Reese Keller was in the right place at the right time. Just run, just keep running. Hear the crowd scream and turn around and there's Reese running the ball in. In an instant, not only had Columbia River turned defeat into victory, it became an internet sensation thanks to cell phone cameras in the crowd. The incredible, unlikely play found its way onto YouTube almost immediately, grabbing hundreds of thousands of hits. But it didn't stop there. Local TV stations grabbed a hold. You're watching K2 News. It's video that's going viral, a local football game with a weird ending. And it only got bigger from there. Did you know that if the ball hasn't crossed the line of scrimmage, the last second blocked field goal attempt can still be a live ball? This is high school football in Washington State, Columbia River, taking on rival Skyview. Being on ESPN is like the ultimate. You know, so, I mean, you could watch ESPN for years and never know anybody on there, you know. Coach John O'Rourke fielded interview requests from as far away as London, England. His team tried to focus on their next game, despite the attention. Uh, it was pretty crazy, you know, not used to it, and I don't think anyone is. Uh, it was just kind of nuts. Although the play overshadowed everything else, the most important things to the players is that at long last, they took down Skyview. Uh, I mean, it was nice and all. It was good. It was nice watching. But, I mean, we just got our job done, so I'm happy we won, ESPN or not. I don't know if it will ever happen to me again, but it was definitely one of the greatest experiences of a lifetime. For In the Know, I'm Nick Ford. Thanks, Nick. If you love high school sports, Fort Sports has you covered. The video production team at Fort Vancouver High School, along with the school district TV studio, brings you live boys and girls sports all through the winter. The games air on Comcast Channel 29 and are also available as a stream on the district website, vansd.org. You can get the schedule there, too. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grants $50,000 to Vancouver Public Schools. The money will help boost student attendance at Fort Vancouver High School. The funding will kickstart a pilot program at Fort as part of its new Family Community Resource Center. The project will focus on freshmen. Data shows that the ninth grade is pivotal for student success. Students who aren't coming to class as freshmen, no matter what the reason, are far less likely to graduate. We have the ability to impact that and work with these families um, in a really comprehensive way with the Family Community Resource Centers. Um, it's just a real win-win opportunity for kids at Fort and for their families. Part of the plan is to train parents on how to use resources such as the district's online parent access. That web-based program makes it easy to track attendance and grades. It's currently available to all VPS parents on the district website. The district's Family Community Resource Centers are all about keeping kids focused on schoolwork, not basic needs. And it's tough to succeed in class if you're not getting enough to eat. Thanks to a partnership with SHARE, a local food charity, students in need are taking food home on Fridays in their very own backpacks.
So on Fridays we have the bags ready for the kids. The kids come into my classroom and we put the food into their backpacks um, for them to take home um, for Friday. It's just a little supplement of food for the weekend and the kids are always excited. They get a little treat to go with it so it's something that they're eager to get and the families really enjoy it too. I think it's awesome that they have the volunteers and the sources out there to help families because, you know, it does help a lot of families in this school district, I know. I've talked to other families that have gotten the service as well and they feel the same way, you know, that they just didn't have the funds to go out and buy the food necessary for their families. So having the backpack program at least pro provides one or two meals sometimes to you know just help you get over that little hump that you need to get to the grocery store the next week you know the kids get nervous about food because <laughs> they're always hungry always and i think that they start to realize when you're struggling you know like unfortunately things that a lot of kids don't normally notice like when the cupboards start to get thin they notice and I think that they get used to knowing what comes next you know and so when they feel like they don't have to get nervous even when it's getting thin they know something's gonna happen somewhere and I think definitely as parents we feel like it doesn't matter if it's getting thin we know we're gonna get help somehow you know it makes you feel a lot more at ease when you're hungry you don't really pay attention and when we didn't do the backpack food it kind of I was kind of struggling during school but now since we do the backpack thing it's been really good for me I think even just the the nutritional value of the bags you know it's it's not you know junk food you know like a lot of people when you go to the store sometimes that's all you can afford to buy is you know stuff that's maybe not as healthy so the stuff that they provide is you know fruits, your proteins, and you know, the stuff that's going to be good for them and to help their bodies to be able to concentrate at school. So that was a big factor for me. I enjoyed that it was, you know, healthy options as well. They're, the kids are fully fed or ready to go. They're ready to learn. They come in, their stomachs are full. They can focus on what is happening at school, whereas the kids that haven't had um, a good amount of meals and food over the weekend, they come and they're hungry. They're, they're, their mind is on, um, on their hunger as opposed to sitting down and learning what the class is learning. So it's a real advantage to have a, a full stomach when they come to school. To donate food or other resources to share, go to sharevancouver.org. If you're in need of a backpack yourself, be sure to contact the Family Community Resource Center at your child's school. That just about does it for us. Remember that you can see more school district news at youtube.com slash vansdtv, and you can also link to it from the district's website. For In the Know, I'm Colleen Jamison.